Caught a preacher saying on the television that no one can lose salvation. I said, what, what, what a word. What a word. Did Judas preserve his salvation? He was among the twelve when he said, your names are written in the book of life. Do we sit on twelve thrones during the twelve times? Would Judas sit on a throne? Burning hot in hell, sir. Judas is burning hot in hell. When Christ told them that he had day, he was among the twelve. But he lost it. How dare they tell you that you can't lose your salvation? People are losing it by day by day. Even people preaching are losing it. Even people preaching are losing it. Be careful. The things you watch. Take it. What you hear. Take it. Oh. Take it. No one will be caught as a witness the day you meet Jesus. One by one. One by one. No, that's my member. He's very committed. Mm -mm. You, you are also on the line. You're on the line. Each one is going by himself. Nobody will stand with you. Ask my mother if I'm not, not saved. Your mother is far. It's another line. You won't see any mother or father. You just enter, they lock the door. Hello? Your name is not here. You won't hear that too. Yeah. Now, listen to me. People lose salvation on daily basis. Grace not to lose your own again. Come on, go ahead and receive it. Go again and receive it. Lord, help me not to lose my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Mr. Chris, is it possible for someone to lose his salvation if he went back to his old life after he got... No, you don't lose your salvation. The only reason, the only way anyone can lose his salvation is a total rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you backslid because you were ignorant, because you were a babe in Christ, you don't lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit just continues to seek opportunities to bring you back to the Lord. So you don't really lose your salvation. But... You just live without all of the blessings of God, and that's, that, that's, um, that's sad. But if you die in that condition of a backslidden state, then you gave up your salvation, and too bad. So um, you don't lose your salvation because you went back to your old life. No, the Lord continues to reach out to you, and that's why other does a person have to be to believe that it's possible for them to lose their salvation, but they haven't? Who do you have to think you are in order to be saved? I, I'm a Christian, and I'm saved, and I'm on my way to heaven when I die. Now, there's a possibility that I could mess this thing up, but I haven't. You probably just did. This one, stealing, adultery, fornication, lies. That's what they call sin. But I want us to look at you know what Jesus said here in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 you have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shall not commit adultery but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart how do you beat that it's a question how do you beat that Jesus said, you have heard that before it is a sin, you must take the woman to a room, pay for a room or whatever, and sleep with her. He said, that's what you were told. I say, they quoted me, but didn't quote me well. I, the word that they were quoting, I'm here now. Let me speak for myself. This is what I say, that you don't even need to take a woman anywhere that you sat down and you look at a woman and in your mind your mind is full of filthy thoughts you have seen so with god it is not the action that is the sin is the thought 
and there's nobody that can say 247 his thoughts are pure that means then if we have to qualify all of us here are on our way to hell i'm teaching good here now. yeah you didn't steal yes you have never talked to any woman but you've been talking to them inside your heart Shut. Shut. then when you think of the outcome if you touch you run away but in your heart you have committed so the man that took the woman and you that is doing side two of you are in the same class then if it is by thinking that we sin then none of us will go to heaven so that is why when we are talking of sin you must be careful we don't classify sin sin is sin okay how do you start confessing from morning till evening your thoughts are wandering your thoughts are flying 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 worry is a sin and there's nobody here that doesn't get worried anxiety is a sin and there's nobody here that doesn't get anxious especially when they give you a promise and the time is approaching you start getting anxious then two minutes after the time three minutes after the time you start sweating under air conditioner oh god let this promise not fail you're anxious you have seen malice is a sin and there are some of you you are grandmasters in maliciousness grandmasters you can keep malice as if you and satan have consulted you didn't steal but you're worried you and the thief are in the same class you didn't kill somebody eh? but you have gossiped you have gossip you took somebody put on the table chop off his ears remove his legs okay the only thing that you remain for him is the intestine and then you are smiling i am righteous with what you have done but but somebody took a gun and wiped somebody out you and that person at the same where god is concerned that's what jesus was saying yeah you don't even have to commit it that you consider it you have seen then who shall be saved so that's why in christianity we don't preach sinless perfection we preach jesus perfection because there's no man that is without sin so if it is by being without sin we shall go nobody will go so jesus saw that nobody can so jesus said i die now once you believe in me even if there is a sin i will not record it i don't know if you understand what i'm teaching here god is not going around marking faults he has passed that level all faults that a man can commit he has put it on jesus punish jesus so that there is justice where sin is concerned that is why what you are hearing from me is over the top good news good news that's why sin cannot undo salvation because salvation is the work of a sinless person jesus the perfect sacrifice that sacrifice was my sacrifice not his sacrifice he did it on my behalf because i couldn't do it if i'm teaching well say i hear yes it i would lose it if it was possible to disqualify myself from salvation i would get disqualified i can't save myself and i can't keep myself saved I can't be righteous enough to save myself, and neither can you, and I can't be righteous enough to keep myself saved. God's going to have to save me by grace. He's going to have to keep me by grace. He's going to have to save me by His power, power of the Holy Spirit, regeneration. He's going to have to keep me by His power, the Holy Spirit's power of protection to the end. And that's the promise of God. We are headed for glory, dear ones, and what that means is we will be like the perfect man, Jesus Christ. First John 3, 2, we'll be like Him when we see Him as He is. We'll have a body like unto the body of His glory, Philippians 3, 20 and 21. We have been chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before Him. And nobody gets lost in the process. John 6 says, all the Father gives to me will come to me and I lose none of them. I lose none of them, but will raise them all at the last day by the power of the Holy Spirit, as Romans 8, 11 says. It's the Spirit who raised Christ from the dead who will also raise us from the dead. So what is the point of salvation? It is that we might be brought into the presence of God to stand before Him and see the fullness of His glory blazing from His throne in the new 
Jerusalem in the center of the new heaven and the new earth and be with Him forever. Be with Him forever. When man comes into the world, he has no glory. We come short of the glory of God. As Paul says in Romans, we fall way short of the glory of God. We can't attain to that. Uh, we have no glory. It is a very, very faded mark, that image of God which we bear from our original creation. It has been terribly scarred and marred. But in Christ we can have glory. In Christ we can become glorious. In Christ we literally share the very glory of God. In the Old Testament, God said, My glory will I not share with another, not another idol, not another false god, but He will share His glory with His people. We live, Paul says, in the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're not glorious yet in the full sense, although we have tasted of that glory. That glory has come into us, the Spirit lives in us. That glory is not yet manifest. That's why Romans 8 that I read earlier says that the whole world hasn't seen the glorious manifestation of the children of God. We're veiled right now. We're, we're veiled. We're covered. They can look at us walking down the street and they don't see any glory. But one day we will be fully glorified and we will be like Christ. That is the goal of salvation. As I pointed out at the end of verse 30, the ones that He predestined will be the ones that He will glorify. So the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in us to keep us secure all the way through the sanctifying process to glory. He is the seal, the guarantee, the engagement ring, the down payment, the first fruits of our coming glory. And this is all based on the fact that we have been made sons, so that the glory which will be ours one day is given to us as an inheritance from our Father. We have been adopted into the family of God. We have been born into the family of God. We're sons both ways, and we are sons in order to...